Today on The Everyday Woman, we explore the gender divide on YouTube and the ever-growing sensation that is vlogging. So an article in the New York Times actually said there were over a thousand vlogs 2018 and 2019 that number is about to double now when you look at the list of the most subscribed to youtube channels you'll find something interesting especially in africa the content that is highly subscribed to is majorly created by women or predominantly features the woman so i don't know why is vlogging becoming such a huge sensation and why are women in africa thriving in this particular industry. So today on the show, I'm featuring two women who are currently running very successful vlogs in the 254. This is The Everyday Woman. Hey guys, I'm back. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And I'm your host, Mikali. This is The Everyday Woman. And today, I have two gorgeous and gorgeous women with me. How are you guys doing? Hey. I'm going to have you And we're talking about vlogging. It's become such a huge sensation. First of all, I do not know the basics of doing it. And most people think if you just have a phone, you're good to go. But then there's so many things that are involved in that. Maybe we could just introduce ourselves as we tell stories of how we got into this. Start. Okay, uh, well, I'm Joy Kendi. I am a fashion and lifestyle content creator. Um, it started off as a hobby. Uh, I don't know, how long have you doing, been doing yours? Because I know mine is like two years after you. <laughs> Ten. Ten years. So so I've been doing it for years. about eight years. Yeah, so we've been doing a lot of content creation and fashion based things for about eight years. And yeah, it just started off as a hobby, as just something to try out. And then over time, I realized that there is actually a market for it and there is ways you can turn it into a career and actually make money, money off of it. Of it. Yeah. Great stuff, Nancy. Uh, I'm Nancy Moy, I'm a digital content creator. I tell stories online on fashion, beauty, lifestyle and travel. I've been doing this for 10 years, just like Joy, it started off as a hobby and years into it, we, you know, I realized how I could monetize my craft. And over the years, things have cropped up like Instagram, YouTube, vlogs, things that were not there 10 years ago. Yeah. So that has been a major plus to what I do. So back in the day, without the social media, what was the platform then? Was it just Facebook? Facebook. 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 Just Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And th that means it started off like a blog? Yeah, so you started a blog. blog. You actually had to start a blog online on the web. Yeah. And then now you try share it on Facebook. Yeah, your history is very interesting. With your friends, actually, there were no pages <laughs> oh, back yeah, then. There was no pages. Yeah. It was straight <laughs> up like your cousins, your friends, your friends, people in school, stuff like that. And then slowly, like through word of mouth type of thing, slowly mm -hmm. growing from there. So all these other platforms that come up, is it intentional for you to put the content there, or it just comes? Um, for me, like it's Over intentional. You you have to like actually do it intentionally. You can't. Yeah. I mean. It, I mean, of course, when we first started off, it was very like YOLO, like we post yeah. whatever we post, but then yeah. you slowly start getting a rhythm. And then once you actually start getting paid, you actually feel the <laughs> yeah. urgency yeah. of having to actually create content and post it up and push it that type of way. Yeah, And if you feel your content fits the platform, I feel like there are for me, YouTube was an easy thing. I remember I put up my first YouTube video in 2010 when we, I had no idea about vlogs. You just used to record yourself doing what you've done and then add words. Because you see the talking and recording just didn't go very well together. So you could get the visual, yeah. but then you had to type out the words. So oh I was showing God. people how to tie a turban and I just typed, I type out the instructions, but you can see me doing it. That's, I remember one of my first videos I ever did. Great stuff, but the confidence, let me tell you, this is what I do. So I'll have something interesting to say, probably I had an interesting day, and I'll take my phone and start recording myself, and that is the end, it will never see the light of day <laughs> because this is what I think so somebody else will have a different opinion another one will have a different opinion but then this is my opinion but I'm not so sure that I want to share my opinion, opinion. with the world without caring what they think or I mean I think when it comes to that I feel like it takes a while to stop caring um, oh, it, it does yeah mm -hmm. like okay like we we're talking about this the last time like how we just don't care 
No, like I'd, genuinely, I'd, like I don't, like I'm not anymore. affected by. Like we used to, obviously, like yeah. somebody like will say something about like you post an outfit that you love, and then people are like, oh my god, why would you wear that? Blah 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 blah. And that used to obviously affect us, especially when you're younger. It's just, it's an, it's it. And then you're putting yourself out there for the yeah. whole world to see, and for yeah. somebody to come back and say something negative it's human nature to feel some type of way but after a while you start realizing like i'm not for everybody and i'm okay with that yeah. and just because i'm not for you doesn't mean i'm not for somebody else yeah and for that's me, cool for me i realized the older i grew that um when i was younger starting out you know, i started when i was around 22 23 yeah, we have pictures yeah of that. <laughs> and you know i did care what people thought of me although i really loved my craft the the love of my craft was more than the fear of what people thought of me. And even with vlogging, I remember when I sat down with a camera to talk, now I was able to talk, and also you could see the visual. I remember I was nervous. I was by myself, but I was very nervous. But the older I've grown, I've said, I'm not gonna tone myself down to be palatable to everybody else. This is who I am, and yeah. I am confident in it. So if I put it out and it's not your cup of tea, you can keep it moving. What about the personal beat of your life? We've seen it take down people. We've seen it take people to other levels as vloggers where you open up your space, personal space, family, friends, boyfriends, husbands, children to the world. And then somehow, I don't want to mention names, but you know, you know. It comes back. <laughs> well, I think she and I have like the same idea of we push our specific things, but okay. we don't, like I personally, I don't like bringing people into my personal life. And what I've learned is when people do that, then people feel like they have a say on your relationship. Like, mm. I mean, like things like even couple what goals What do they say? We are like in-laws. We are part... Yeah, you, yeah, like, you like told us when you were dating, when you're breaking up and you have problems, please share with us. Yeah, so I, I mean, and I'm also very guilty of that. Like, if I see you constantly talk about your relationship, yeah. and then y'all break up, this is not the time for you to be like, I need, I need time I need for us to do like, we, no, need, we need the tea, you tell us. From the beginning, you know, I want to be there till the end. Yeah. So if you'd never, so like for us, we don't put that part of our life out there, which means that I never have to explain anything to you. True. I don't need to explain who I'm dating to you. I don't need to explain if we break up. It, like, I don't need to explain yeah. that part of my life because I'm not sharing it. So we choose what we share, but we share parts of our lives that are not too personal in the sense that it's not going to affect us. Yeah. It comes, but like, yeah. Beautiful, which is business. Yeah, yes. I mean, you have to look at it as a business. business. Right. But then some people's families are their business. It, I mean, it's, oh, it's for yeah. everybody. Yeah, there are people who actually don't yeah. mind oversharing, and I and really, I love it. And I yeah. love it. We love watching them. Yeah, they are we it's love entertaining. Watching. Oh, we love watching. Yeah, and you know, you have more people yeah. in your video. Like, you have a whole crew. It's your family, it's your crew. You know, some of you are alone, and it's me. You know, my daughter is coming into the room, I'm switching off my camera. I'm like, okay, what you want? You know what I mean? But yeah, I it's do. a choice I've made. After I gave birth, I decided this is the path I'm going to take. I love what I do. Yeah. But I need to set some boundaries. Vlogging has changed the scene, Kabisa. You know, we had TVs, that's where, and YouTube, where we just, if you want to see something that went on air, and that was such a huge space. But vlogging is quickly, it has actually taken over the space where people are just following vlogs like a sippist. It's like, I have my notification bell is on. Whenever they put on something, I know exactly what's happening. But creating content is not easy every other time. Coming up with something that will be relevant for your audience, it will be juicy enough that I won't be bored at minute two and be like, hey, 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 Ali Jaribu, I'm up all the strings and after your content. How is that journey for you as a person trying to create content over and over? Because I think it's like a daily thing. Yeah. Um I feel like we've all had this. You are on top of your game. Tell no us. Way. You're always posting 10 times a day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us the secret. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> tell us so the we, tea. <laughs> so I want to know. I, like, okay, so she's really good at YouTube. Like really, oh, yeah. really good. Like she's constant, like uh, she's consistent. She's posting on time. She she has content that she always pushes. I struggle with YouTube, but I'm good with social media. Like okay. I'm good at Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, like creating like short videos, condensing them into three minute vlogs with no words, but just nothing but music, fashion, like that type of stuff. Like I can constantly post on Instagram. So I think you pick your, like you, like you can't, it's like you can't do it all like there's no way like so something is always gonna end up missing yeah you're gonna, gonna like this like, people who and i know people who actually do all of them what i don't know how they lose their mind and after a while i think we've all had creative slumps because mm -hmm. we've been doing this for so long like there will be a time that your brain is just like 
I have nothing more to give. Like, there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. And then when that happens, I used to get really stressed out about it, but now I've gotten to the point of like, and even, I think it's actually you who told me this once, and I was just like, oh my God, you're so right. The idea of me, I have nothing to give you. <laughs> Like, oh, that's and already not be stressed. Long. No, not, not even that. Like, if, if I have, have nothing, nothing it's, oh, okay. Okay. it's okay. And it's I'm not okay. having a stress yeah. about it. Like, I'm just like, it's okay I'm on the couch and I'm not wearing makeup for the next three weeks. So just leave me alone. Like, I it's, have nothing. It's imagine I usually say, and it's, it's okay. okay. It's and okay. I've even stopped apologizing. Like, I used to be like, I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, I've I really seen one wanted of your to vlogs. go. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, now I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I, I don't have anything. And you're just a day late. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I have. I've owed people a video for the past month and a half, two months. I have nothing. <laughs> but how do you get out of that space? Do you choose, uh, or is it things that happen in your day-to-day -day life? You are on the streets today and then you just see something and you're like, that is what I'm gonna talk about. Or does it have to be intentional what you're trying to push? It's both ways. I feel for me, YouTube is more of everyday life and I choose like things that I'm going through to always voice them on my video. Yeah. I feel like it's also easier to relate to someone on visual as opposed to like a picture mm -hmm. uh, also photos I know for Instagram even creating content for Instagram has a thought process I usually say it's a business at the end of the day yes and it's deliberate the reason you love what they do is because they have deliberately created that's what's called content creation it's yeah. deliberate you yeah. get it's planned so yeah. when you ask how come mine you you just probably take a picture to post but this person really did think there is a whole process to it from the concept to the editing to you know thinking of a caption and you know posting it it's it's a whole process it's not just a picture and it's not as simple as people think like people genuinely think so that what you we just do take it, i keep saying you just do take it selfies, and I'm like, then you do it <laughs> do you know how do much you, like, instagram is free we all got it there's a process there's a they do it. Think it out yeah yeah yeah, because people think if you have a phone, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah like that's it. That's not it. That's I can do what it. you do. Do that's it. Not it. Especially if you want to turn into a business. It's yeah, not that yeah. That's not it. Yeah. Uh, vlogging in Africa. Women are taking it by storm. It's crazy. It's big compared to what is happening in the West where men are more in it. But when you look at Africa, most of the content is created by women or probably it's talking about a woman. So it's it's majorly for the woman and we are in that space and we're loving it. Why do you think so? Where are our guys? What are they doing? Is it is it a woman thing? Is it because we like to talk a lot or is it because we're just good at creating stuff? I don't think it's a woman thing, but mm. I think it's a place women have felt comfortable. You know, also in a place where other women encourage them. You know, um, even when I post a video, the amount of support I get in the comments and at the beginning when you start something yeah. your friends may really tell you do it do it do it I got your back but it reaches a, your, a point your friend doesn't have your back it doesn't mean that they hate you or anything yeah. but it just they don't have the time to keep looking at your blog post but then you start gathering a community of other women who support you yeah. and that's now the online community I feel like we've really felt safe within there we are able to create our own what we want even from the comfort of our homes without leaving it's a new way of life this is something I didn't even see 10 years ago when I started yeah. my first blog post yeah. I thought I was doing this as a hobby I'd seen other women in the West doing it taking their pictures but I never thought in my wildest dreams that 10 years later it would be what I mm -hmm. earn yeah I, ne I never thought I never saw it yeah um, I think First of all, like everything that she just said, I definitely agree with that. But um, I think also women, especially black women, African women, for the longest time, just as a culture and like worldwide, we've not, like we never used to get that much support, just yeah. generally. Like we were never, like just even when you think about beauty and like whatever, we were never viewed as beautiful women and that type of thing. So when women start seeing other women pushing us, or like us pushing ourselves, yeah. they just feel like we need support because I've been there. I know what that's and like. And then they feel they can be able to do to it as to you. well. Yeah, you and know when you see people in the yeah. West doing it, you're always like, hey, you know, it's there. Then their opportunities are different. But when you see someone in your home country doing it, it's easier. It's easier now. I keep saying it's easier now for women to start vlogging and doing what I do than it was easier for me back, back then. The day, for me, it took it took me two years to start because I kept saying, "What is what is this exactly? I'm trying to do." You know yeah. what I mean? I couldn't relate to anyone. I never saw any black bloggers then. But now, imagine someone you can 
you know, 60 degrees of separation. This someone is in your town and they're doing it. Why can't you? It's so easy for them now yeah. to just be like, Nancy can do it, I can, Joy can do it, Patricia, all these names. So it's easy for them to be like, I want to do that. Hits and misses. We've done things, try Zex things. They say the first time you do it, it's not going to be perfect every time. So by the time you do the 50th vlog, then you've learned so many mistakes along the way. But when you look back, there's this probably a video, a blog, you're like, wow, what was that? Did do, do you have um, a... No, I usually like to look at them like, what? <laughs> we're talking Bali. We're talking Bali. Yeah, yeah, like I don't like I don't hate like I love actually looking back yeah. at like old stuff. Like even just like our old blog posts, like our very first ones. Like there you was have some, them still. That's the issue. Like I, I wish deleted that a lot of mine them, I and I regret mine. it. I just, some deleted? of them deleted. I regret by it. I wish I could be able to go back and see yeah. my. I know I used to vlog, vlog some stupid things, and I wish I could go back to see and just that. Just even growth. like our fashion choices, our yeah. makeup. Like, oh, I missed, oh. I removed I'm everything not, not from the internet, other. yeah. But yeah. for my videos, mm -hmm. I know I had two vlog videos, which I deleted, which I wish I made them private. But I said I'm never going to go back and delete any of my videos because I want to see the growth. I never watch my old stuff, never. ever. No, I don't watch I, myself just in general. I like, don't, I I don't like voice. listening. What are you talking like, about? I cannot stand. Like, the only time I listen to myself is the editing process. When I'm editing, as after I upload, posted, I'm just, like, I move on to the I'm next. To Jesus. Um, are there things along the way you felt like, my audience doesn't want this, some of them not, they're not taking this? Is it a reinvention process as you go? Or you still hold on to whatever it is that puts you in the market at the beginning? Um, I think there's a like you have to reinvent yourself. Yeah. You start you like you because there's nothing worse than like working hard on something and then like nobody watches it. So yeah. it can't, like you just are like okay, so y'all don't like it. Let's not waste my time. Yeah, type of thing. So like you you start like realizing what people like and what people don't like, and then you slowly start to reinvent yourself and you start working like harder at those specific things. Um, for me, it's been a journey for me. So whatever it is I'm going through, I share. So for me, since it's everyday life, that is what I take it upon myself to share. As much as people may want it, I'm not going to share something I'm not passionate about. You have to be about. passionate about you it. You have to it. genuinely yeah. be. Because yeah. a lot of people don't realize a lot of us, not all, but a lot of us are one-man teams. Like, so... Oh, the like, editing, everything. Like, we yeah. shoot our own videos, we take our own pictures, we edit our own stuff. Like, just, we do everything it, by ourselves. Yeah. So That's a lot of work. It if is. I'm not passionate about whatever people want me to do. Like, I'm, like, I, like you can't force passion. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you, like, you can't force it. So and if you're not 100% invested in it, then you just... And that's why people quit right quite early when they're like oh it's just taking pictures but then when they realize the work behind just Passion taking a problem just taking people. pictures or just doing video because it, it has to be when you're getting into it since now people are actually getting into it yeah starting as a business when you get into it it has to be not just about the money because you're seeing yeah, someone live focus the life so much about want. the money way too early yeah like we used to get paid with exposure yeah, I was oh. like for years. We did this for free. Like oh, it was it, for yeah, free. Like we did it because we genuinely free. liked it. Yeah. Until we started realizing that there's an actual way to like Monetize, make money off yeah. of it. Then we're like, okay, let's just try that. But we're doing it for free. So a lot of people will straight up like, hey, I just started a blog three weeks ago. What do I need to do to start making money? I'm just like, we worked for free ago? for five years. <laughs> like, took me at least three, four years before I got my first. It took like, me I think check. four years before I got yeah. my first check, and I think my first check was something. like yeah. Let's talk about the money now then, because mm -hmm. May letter. <laughs> um, can I leave off that solely? Uh, I don't know about like specifically vlogging, okay. but content creation, 100%. Yes, yes, you can. I live like this is my full time job. Like I'm 100%. For just you, or you create content for other people as well, for other for spaces, other brands. Oh, no, no, yeah, like for brand, like, so that's how we make money, so through sponsorship. So a brand, like let's say it's a clothing brand, they need okay. to push the new collection that's coming in within the next three weeks or whatever. Okay. They pay you to talk post, about to talk about it. So you talk yeah. about the outfits, you wear it, showing people. It's a new form of advertising. Yeah. It is, yeah. and it's beautiful. So 3,000, 5,000, can we also talk about like the highest, what's the highest amount of check you've ever gotten for just doing this? Wow. Like, yeah, I, please wow. indulge me, indulge me. Like that <laughs> one. I'm, I'm not saying. No, not saying. No. no, like the highest. No, no. not at all. No. Was it a kawida katkati? What's no. the range now? Wherever you are in business. Okay, so no. let me tell you. For okay, everyone, you can... for everyone, it's different. Okay. Uh, yeah. There are actually tools online where you can measure your your worth. 
you can measure the worth of your Instagram, the worth of a post on your Instagram, the worth of even a story, your tweet. Your f you can be able to go on these tools online, they are free. You just put at Nancy Moy and you're able to measure the worth. So for all the guys out there who say, I want to be a vlogger, I want to live a good life, what is it that they need? What would you tell that person over there? Number one, like when just generally it comes to like content creation, like you have to already start thinking about it as a business. If that is what your plan is, yeah, you need to start thinking about it as a business early on. Um, the one thing that I wish, like of course, like the passion has to be there. Like if you don't have the passion, it's not gonna work. It's but you passion. have to, like I wish that I started thinking business wise a lot earlier. And also you have to be comfortable with not being paid for a little bit. Just, yeah. just come to terms with that. <laughs> Nice. Well, for me, it's you have to know your why. Why do you want to do this? Because mm -hmm. your why will keep you going. Um, your why cannot be money because there are days when there is zero cash, especially at the beginning, it's going to be such a struggle. So you have to keep going. And on top of that, you have to look at this from a broader perspective, where you look at it as much as you're enjoying it, you also have to look at it as a business and also see the opportunities that are there. We can, you can keep looking at the small things, like I want to post, I want to be like, hi, I want to be, you know, watching what other people are doing and then also trying to recreate what they are doing. So you need to also so be yourself because that's why we become as big as we are because we we are ourselves this is who we are this is me so this is the end of the show and this is where we talk about those vlogs nigan imagine and to party youtube channel to like not to follow on social media so handle it so for me is Nancy Moy, Nancy with an I-E, uh, Nancy Moy on all my platforms I'm mostly on Instagram and YouTube um um Joy Candy but Everything is just Joy Candy, so G U S T Joy Candy. Um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, my blog is just joycandy.com. Like everything, just Joy Candy. All right. Uh, Mikali, Mikali Mary, just Instagram. Talk to us on social media. That's KTN Life and Style on Facebook, KTN Life underscore style on Twitter and Instagram. Asante ni sana Thank you. It's Thank been you very educative. I have learned so much. All I need to do is just try. Just do it. And I'm not for Start everyone. with what you have. Yeah. yeah. Just post, I did a video today. In the morning. Just post and then sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah, just post and sleep. Just let it go. You guys are not ready. <laughs> this has been the Everyday Woman. We'll be right back after the break with books and blogs.